After deciding space probably wasn't the best place for a gunfight, Call of Duty goes back to its roots this year. World War II is fairly well covered ground by this point in gaming, but it's been out of favour for just long enough for the beach landings and bayonet stabbings in Call of Duty World War II to feel raw and exciting again. The only problem really is that it's still a Call of Duty game, which means those Swedish teenagers who've been throwing nades at you with the precision of a Nata Cyborg all these years aren't going to let up just because the mech suits have been swapped out for burlap trousers. So to take the sting out of your early experiences on the battlefield, no not that one, obviously not that one, here are 6 mistakes to avoid making in Call of Duty World War 2. Yes, forgetting to heal. Seriously. We're not trying a joke enter here like not being good enough at playing the game, although that is a common mistake in fairness. But look, forgetting to heal yourself is a very real danger in Call of Duty World War II solo campaign thanks to the reintroduction of medkits. Your squadmate Zussman carries medkits around and throws you on if you ask him nicely, but when your health bar depletes it's up to you to use them manually, and the animation that plays when you do so is actually quite lengthy, which means if you leave it too late, you become allied minestrone. So, you know, don't leave it too late. Heal behind cover when you get down to your last third of health and you'll live to… well, you'll live long enough to have to do it again in 30 seconds at least. War Mode's Operation Neptune mission begins with your team either repelling allied forces from a comfy bunker, or being blown apart in freezing water by turret guns and artillery fire from all directions. Guess which one's more fun? If your opponents are particularly adept, it might seem like an impossible task to get off the beach at first. They're literally hidden behind concrete bunkers for heaven's sake and most of the cover you find appears to be made of damp paperback covers. Not to worry, there are a couple of different approaches to take. One is to simply pretend you're an AI soldier running straight lines and hope by chance you're not picked off. All the other team sees are men running away from the boats, so if you move just like the computer chaps, you may avoid detection. For a more proactive approach though, make sure someone on your team picks a sniper rifle in their class loadout and draw attention with their long range fire. While the turrets are busy locating them, the rest of you can move up the beach. The third approach is one to only employ in times of desperation. We call it the run and dunk and it works 25% of the time, all the time. Killing someone with a grenade in Call of Duty multiplayer is a feeling akin to holding your first born child in your arms while gently popping bubble wrap under your feet. Naturally then, you're keen to chuck some potato mashes out in times of engagement and hope for the best. And naturally, you die while doing so, again and again. Like healing, the act of pulling the pin on a grenade and throwing it takes quite a long time and you're vulnerable during the entire time. To minimise mid-throw deaths, start throwing it when you're safe behind cover and hold on to it that second longer. Now when you throw, you only have the second half of the animation to wait out. There are certain areas on a multiplayer map that are always a safe bet to lob a nade. Hard points, wherever the ball is in a gridiron match, and pokey little rooms being three prime candidates. Don't wait until you see an enemy in these situations, chuck them out before the shooting starts. You'll be astonished to hear this but we're not actually pro COD esports players. Like most people, we're starting from pretty much the ground floor when a new game enters a series, and that means for the first few rounds, we end up doing this. Running around, hoping to turn a corner and find someone looking the other way, so we can clumsily shoot them in the knees until dead. This rather flawed approach can also find its way to adoption when you're having a particularly bad game and the red mist clouds your better tactical instincts. But heed our words and you can work yourself out of this mage running funk and back to a half respectable KD. When you're running around a map at speed, two things are happening. Firstly, your footsteps are sending loud audio cues to everyone nearby. And secondly, you're rounding lots of corners unsighted and without looking down your sights. There's a small chance you'll find someone off guard, but a much bigger chance of being that person. So instead, slow things right down, find a particular area of the map near a choke point and move slowly, looking down your sights whenever a new angle opens up. 
It's what the old folks used to call camping back in the olden days. But as long as you're not crouching stock still behind a crate for the entire round, there's no shame in playing a slower and more considered style. A circumstance common in both campaign and multiplayer for mistake number five, missing these absurdly tiny warning indicators that let you know someone's chucked an explosive device at your ankles. Unfortunately, there's no make imminent death indicators bloody massive tick box in the game options, so the only way to combat this is to first be aware that they're tricky to spot. With that in mind, it's usually best to just move out of the way rather than trying to throw them back since you're likely to spot them late and sometimes you'll end up just throwing one of your own while the original grenade lies at your feet ready to ruin everything. Perhaps you've mastered the art of shooting enemies with the bullets in your gun. Maybe you're handy with a grenade too, but there's a chink in your armour that's keeping you from consideration for the bronze star. You keep dragging wounded squadmates around until they expire on the battlefield, not that one. This is one of the more confusing mechanics in COD World War II's campaign. What the game wants you to do is locate an injured comrade and pull them to one of a few very specific locations indicated on a HUD. Hang in there, buddy! But in the heat of battle, that's not always clear. And if you keep dragging them without getting them into that designated cover in time, they'll go ahead and die. This one's easy to remedy. Just take a second to look around for those bizarrely specific cover locations once you've picked a soldier up and get them there sharpish. There. We'll be recommending you for the highest honour for this soldier, a gaudy camouflage paint job for that assault rifle. War never changes. Except when it goes from the near future of space to the trenches of the past. Either way, you'll have a blast getting back to basics with Call of Duty World War II, and hopefully the transition will be a little easier now that you know what to be on the lookout for. Let us know if you're looking forward to the Call of Duty franchise going back to its roots in the comments, like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to Logitech G for more weekly content.